What's up, everybody? Welcome to Moxie Bets, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm Katie Mox, and we finally made it. Football is back. Week one is finally here. As always, the season kicks off with the defending champions this year. It's the Kansas City Chiefs, whoop, whoop, who beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl. Still a very, very fun moment for me. Versus the very hyped up Detroit Lions, a.k.a. the Fighting Dan Campbells, here to help us break down this game. We've got our friend, Mr. Monday, on a Tuesday. Monday was a holiday. Danny Brasco. Danny, week one, game one this week. How are we feeling? We're back, Katie. How long have we been waiting for this moment? I was re-watching a lot of our highlight tapes from last year, some of the sharp calls we made, uh, and just kind of remembering all the spots that we played. Looking forward to doing it all year again with you once more. Yes, I know. I'm so excited. Danny, real quick before we get started, any advice to bettors betting week one? Because I feel like sometimes people get a little overexcited for week one, end up blowing a lot of their um, bankroll. Any any tips that you can give us on uh, betting the NFL in week one? I mean, you started it. We, first of all, it's week one, right? We got a long season ahead of us. Put your money out on the table. Decide how much you want to play with for the season. What are you going to bet per game? Make it a consistent amount and have some sort of rhyme or reason or strategy. Don't just go betting random amounts on this and that based on your emotion or what happened in the last bet that you made. Have a strategy. Have consistency. And, of course, you said uh, over was the word you used. Overreaction league. This is the National yeah. <laughs> Overreaction League. Guys, yes. keep your emotions in check. The last thing you saw may not be the thing you see for the rest of the season. Right. Try to keep an objective perspective and remember that this league flip-flops a lot. One injury, you know, one big play uh, can change a lot. So, you know, try to be level-headed throughout the season. It's a wild league. Yeah, I would say definitely like maybe smaller unit sizes on the first couple games. You got to see what these teams look like. Like you said, the team that you last saw in this case, the Kansas City Chiefs, may not look the same. And the team that has been overly hyped all offseason long, the Lions, might not look how you've been reading about either. So like, you know, dip your toe in a little bit, maybe smaller size uh, units. Uh, on this first week, but let's get right into it. The very first Thursday Night Football game one of the 2023 NFL season. The Chiefs are six and a half point home chalk, minus 350 on the money line. Very, very heavy favorites, but it is down half a point from the opening. Uh, the total is 54 and a half. As of Tuesday morning, when we are recording this podcast, 65% of tickets, 72% of the money is on the Kansas City Chiefs, 79% of money on the over. This is the second career meeting between Patrick Mahomes and Jared Goff. The first, Danny, was the Rams and a 54 to 51 win. Of course, Mahomes won that one in 2018. Actually, no, I believe the... The Rams won. So the Rams won. So Jared Goff won that game, 54 to 51, 2018. Um, it's the only game in NFL history where both teams scored 50 plus points. That's why we're seeing such a high total here. Uh, the defending Super Bowl champions, Danny, 14 and four in the NFL kickoff game since 2024. KC has won eight straight week one games, seven straight with 30 plus points or longer. That is the, or more, excuse me, that is the longest streak in NFL history. We're going to give a side bet and we're going to give a total bet. Um, but starting with the side, based on everything that I just said and everything that you know, are you laying the six and a half points or how are you going to be attacking this one? Man, you laid it out. The Chiefs come out of the gate swinging. Andy Reid, Pat Mahomes. I mean, the whole team, every trend points to how they get it done in week one. And Super Bowl champions also have favorable trends. I mean, mm -hmm. they do really well uh, on the money line and against the spread in week one, too. So, except the Rams. Except the Rams, right? Remember that? The little hangover they had. We knew they <laughs> sold everything they had for that one Super Bowl. They're yep. not going to win for a decade. But we're on to the Chiefs here, who, <laughs> who, who very well could be poised to have that dynasty-like kind of run here. I just... Look, all the trends you mentioned, I'm going to go the opposite direction, if you can believe it, Katie, because okay. week one dogs of six and a half points or more, 47 and 28, which is a 63% win rate against the spread since 2005. And week one road dogs that didn't make the previous postseason are 75 and 47, 64% win rate. So right now we got good mathematical angles on these big dogs and Katie. I was talking about watching the thing, you know, some of the clips from our show last year. You and I were cashing against big spreads with Mahomes and the Chief regularly yes. because, as yes. good as he is, they don't cover those wide numbers. Mm -hmm. And if you're betting against the Chiefs when they're three and a half point dogs or more, you're making a lot of money. I mean, it's a very, very profitable angle. So 
Uh, I like fading the Chiefs when they're big favorites, despite all the hype. The Super Bowl champs coming back here. I think the line is a little too wide, and this ends up being a competitive back and forth game. So give me the points. I'll actually buy a point. I'll do an alternate spread. Oh, wow. Buying a point. Seven and a half. Okay. Yeah, and, and and that point, you know, Katie, can make all the difference, right? It's yeah. the difference of yeah. the touchdown or the extra point or not. So right. if they win by seven, I want to cash my bet. I'll take Lions plus seven and a half. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that. And I, I like that you're buying a point on the very first game, just coming out the gates with this. Uh, look, I agree with everything that you're saying. And you already mentioned this. Teams getting three and a half points or more against Patrick Mahomes are 37, 30, and one against the spread, including – 10 and 4 against the spread last season, 28 and 15 over the last three seasons. So, one thing we know Chiefs, very, very good. Chiefs aren't covering machines. And it's mostly because they have these large spreads. It's very hard to win by a touchdown or more, even if you are Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. So, like you, I'm worried about the backdoor cover here, especially when you look at Jared Goff. Danny, did you know that Jared Goff is the most profitable week one quarterback against the spread? He is 6-0 and against the spread in his six starts in the NFL. That scares me. So I know they say scared money don't make no money. And the Chiefs <laughs> should be able to cover this 6.5. But I'm a little week one worried about it as well. So I'm going to take the Chiefs in the first half, minus four. That's at minus 110. The Chiefs are beasts. 33 straight games without losing by five points or more, including in the playoffs. Um, you know, they ranked second last year in first half points. So I like that at 15 and a half. The Lions, the last three games of the season, were averaging about 12 points in the first half. So that's almost here at that four. And you got to think Chiefs, home, Arrowhead, one of the liveliest places to play. Um, I, I think they're going to come out and they're going to get out strong. I'm worried about this backdoor cover. So I am like you just doing a getting a little cute with it. And I'm going to take the Chiefs minus four in the first half. But I think we both think that they should be able to cover this six and a half. But I don't know. Just a little worried about it. Yeah, I think I think they're going to look good. But again, we talked about not really knowing what to expect. Like you can't we can't come here and have like these big, big, bold opinions about what their team looks like on paper. We have to see them execute. Yeah. You know, everyone thought the Chiefs offense was going to take a massive step back after losing Tyreek Hill. They got better. Yes. So what do they look like now with a lot of kind of, uh, you know, lower tier receivers, it would seem on paper. You know, I want to see how these teams pan out. Are the Lions going to be, are they going to live up to the hype? They lost DeAndre Swift. They lost, you know, a couple running backs. What's their, Jameer Gibbs going to look? We have a lot of questions to answer. So for now, before they're answered, I kind of want points. It's going to be scary yeah. going yeah. against Super Bowl champs in Arrowhead, but I want points if I can get them. All right. So speaking of wanting points, um, if you can get them, the point total, 54 and a half. Now the over has cashed in four straight meetings between these teams, including the last time they saw each other in 2019, 34 to 30. How are you betting this total? It's tricky. It's very tricky, and it's hard not to lean to the over. There's a lot of trends that point to the over. Andy Reid, Chiefs, week one, early on overs. I mean, you mentioned that 54-51 to 51 game where Goff and Mahomes faced off. That was I remember that game very well. It was one of the, maybe the craziest game I've ever watched. Just absolute shootout. And this one stylistically looks like it could be slated to be very similar. I mean, we know the Lions struggled mightily in the secondary last yeah. year. They got chewed up. They brought in some pieces, uh, Emmanuel Mosley, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. So – We'll see if that shores it up. But again, week one, it ain't easy, especially being a defensive back in week one, trying to figure out all these crazy schemes. So I figure like that's maybe the, the hardest to adapt to, right, in week one for the corners. Uh, and then, you know, it's it's, it's uh, the Lions who have a similarly uh, threatening offensive attack. Jameer Gibbs, the explosiveness of Monray St. Brown. Chiefs didn't have, you know, had their plenty of struggles in the secondary uh, for themselves last year. So how do you not lean to the over? It's just such a high total, Katie, that yeah. I feel like I want to pass. You know I love my under. Yeah. This one is so high that that maybe the line actually tells you over. Public yeah. safety on the over. I lean it too, but I'll pass. All right, Danny. Uh, you're leaning over on this one, even though you like the under, which I understand. I kind of lean under for the full game um, on this one, just because I'm not sure exactly what, what we're going to get from the Lions. But the one thing I do know is that the Kansas City Chiefs know how to score points. And here's the thing. I like the Chiefs over three and a half touchdowns. That's at minus 135. And I also like Chiefs team total over 30 and a half. Now, of course, that's at minus 115. The, the touchdowns is a little bit safer. That's at 28 points. That's why that's a little bit juicier. Team total, you know, you got to mix in, uh, you know, uh, something else with that. But look, the defense for the 
Lions on paper is a really good defense. Now we talked about, they got torched in the secondary last year. They made a lot of moves in free agency to beef that lineup. But it's Patrick Mahomes. The Eagles had the top defense in the Super Bowl last year, and Mahomes was even injured. He was hobbling out there in the, you know, the, the second quarter through the first half or second half, and he still put up 38 points. Week one of Kansas City, since Patrick Mahomes has been a starting quarterback, in 2018, they scored 38 points. In 2019, they scored 40 points. In 2020, 34. 2021, 31. 2022, 44. Now that was against the Arizona Cardinals. What I'm saying here is that the Chiefs averaged 37.8 in week one games in the Patrick Mahomes era. So to me, I'm like, I don't know where this game is going to go. Maybe you lean over. I kind of think, I don't know. I don't believe in the fighting Dan Campbells. I'm not as high on them as everybody else is. Also, they were what, one in six in the first seven games last year. I know they ended hot, but let's think about how this, this team starts. They've started slow a couple years in a row. But the Chiefs, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, give me the Chiefs team total over 30 and a half. And uh, let's get over three and a half touchdowns. All right, looking at uh, the quarterbacks, you've got one of the greatest of all time, Patrick Mahomes, and Jared Goff. Uh, what are you looking at for either of these so, guys? So funny enough, actually, once again, going back through the tapes, watching what succeeded for us last year, we cashed a lot of longest completion overs. And instead of playing the passing yards or the passing uh, completions, sometimes all you got to do is uncork one bomb, nice big breakaway play, and your bet's over. You cash it nice and easy. And I saw uh, out of eight out of 17 weeks, uh, J Jared Goff went over 35 and a half yards for his longest completion. He gets one more explosive weapon in Jameer Gibbs here, who is a fantastic receiving back. And I feel like that's super live here. I think the offensive line for the Detroit Lions is going to be the best feature of that offense this season. And behind those guys pushing the pile, the screen game is going to get open. And, and once you open that, I mean, Amon Ray St. Brown out of the slot, you, you can spread this yeah. offense out in a number of ways and there's speed and explosivity everywhere you look. So whether it's St. Brown or Gibbs, who I'm feeling like breaks off that big play i think we see golf pass one for over 35 and a half yards tonight Ooh, tonight. i like that and and yeah i mean he does know definitely how to to air it out and it's just so crazy that how well he's doing in uh in detroit because right when that trade happened we thought okay they're going to use him for one year then they're going to draft for a quarterback and we're never going to see jared goff again and then here we are talking about you know uh, kind of felt like uh him. like they sent him off to siberia just to like live out his days in exile you know and all of a sudden he's thrived yeah. he's resurging he's bawling yes and and the rams did get their one super bowl but now they're in you know purgatory for <laughs> the next 10 years uh i'm i'm still looking at patrick mahomes again i don't know too much about this Lions team for me for me personally to feel confident in backing them on things. But I know Patrick Mahomes, and what I know about Patrick Mahomes is he gets about three passing touchdowns in the first week uh, of the NFL season. So I'm taking him over the two and a half. It's interesting that you could get Mahomes over two and a half passing touchdowns or touchdown passes, however you want to word it, a plus money. It's at plus 114. So he averages um, just at this mark. He had three touchdowns or more passes in eight games last season. But if you look at week one, week one Mahomes has had 49 touchdown passes um, in 16 starts. And that's an average of three per game. So if you're going to give me Patrick Mahomes, at home, um, you know, and, and it's, the Chiefs are never disrespected, right? They're never disrespected, but there's so much hype on the Lions. You know that Patrick Mahomes wants to come out there and just shove it down their throats. And so I'm, I'm, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes. If I think they're going over on all of these things, then Patrick Mahomes is going to have to have three passing touchdowns. It's at plus money. I love that. So I'm going to take Mahomes. I guess I hope we see a shootout here because you've got a lot of good Chiefs angles. And if they yeah. come out and are the Super Bowl champions that they were with a healthy Mahomes, like there's no reason that all of these can't hit. Hoping that the Lions that I'm super high on can hang with these guys and are on that elite level can be kind of that considered that team. Yeah. I mean, hopefully we can catch. But I'll tell you this much. If you're watching the show, someone's making money. If you're following Katie's angles, you're probably, you know, my Lions angle, yeah. you're going to make money one of two ways. So I like that we're spreading the board here. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, see what resonates with you. You know what I mean? Like, we do we do the research for you. We we put our our best foot forward. Um, you got to do what you feel in your heart as well, um, and through your own research. Don't just blindly tail other people. But all right, we're gonna take a quick break here, Danny. We come back. We're talking NFL props and parlays for Chief Lions. Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. 
All right, welcome back to Moxie Bets, presented by Caesar Sportsbook here with Danny Brasco, previewing game one of the NFL season between the Lions and the Chiefs. Let's get propping. I know we talked about some quarterback props, but it's time to get propping. Danny, what is your favorite non-quarterback prop? Um, starting with the Chiefs, who are you targeting? Let's get propping. I love that. That's like, I'm going to, that's a new tagline right there. Looking at a non QB player prop, there's a lot that I want to take. I'm looking at all sorts of different receivers, their receptions, their yards. And it's, it, I got a little overwhelmed in week one. I'm like a kid in yeah. a candy store. I want to grab a little bit of everything. But mom <laughs> says, no, you can't have that. You can't <laughs> afford all that. You got to pick one, Daniel. So, so you're a tantrum. <laughs> exactly. So Daniel is going to actually end up picking like a weird candy. He's going to go maybe to like the licorice section and go away from the more attractive yeah. players, the big names. And I'm going with Marquez Valdez Scantling to go mm. over 34 and a half receiving yards. Now, a lot of people are going to go towards Kelsey or, you know, uh, uh, some of the bigger yep. names. Yeah. And I could not blame you. I understand, right? He's an absolute machine. Um, but I feel like Valdez Scantling is one of the more familiar targets that Mahomes has now on this new cast of receivers that's, you know, outlined by a kind of banged up Kadarius Tony still, Sky Moore. You know, they're going to have to figure out who's that, who are some of the lead guys after Kelsey when he's double, triple teamed, right? Not going to be available every play. And Valdez Scantling's a guy that Mahomes has gone to in a number of times before. He also rattles off big, uh, big shots to him. He likes him as a deep threat. So I feel like in week one, uh, for going back to the well look, week one last year, uh, Valdez Scantling had 44 yards and he used him in the playoffs really well against the Bengals. I feel like he remembers that clutch target he had. If it's not, you know, if you're looking for familiarity early on, it's Kelsey and it's Valdez Scantling. So when they're not looking at big Travis, go to Valdez and give me over 34 and a half receiving yards. It's a low mark. I think he goes over this. I love that. Um, and I also want them to be looking at Big Travis because I am taking Travis Kelsey over six and a half receptions. It's juiced a little bit, minus 127. Uh, look, I, you know, like I said earlier, scared money don't make no money. And I'm playing it so safe. I'm disgusted with myself. But I'm sorry. The two things that I know about this game are Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey are very, very good and will make things happen at their home crowd in this first game. And so, look, he was targeted around nine times per game last season. He averages at this mark six and a half. They've got some new receivers going on there that might take a little bit of time um, to get beefed up. And so I think that Travis Kelsey is going to have a lot of targets and a lot of receptions in this game. And, yeah, he's going to be double and triple team, but he always is. And it doesn't matter. That guy gets the ball. And he also gets into the end zone. Um, and like we said last year, Lions rank 30th in pass defense. Now, I don't think they're going to be bad th that bad this year. I don't even think they're going to be close to that bad this year because they did make some good um, calls in free agency, got uh, beefed up their team a little bit. But Travis Kelsey is just someone that's always going to get the ball. So I love that. Now, looking at um, Detroit, any props that you like here? Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about Jameer Gibbs. These guys traded down for him to pick uh, the rookie running back out of Alabama, and there's a reason they went for him. There was even talk that they might pick him over uh, B. John Robinson if they could trade that far down in the draft. Didn't happen, but that's how high they think of him, and I'm expecting them to try to utilize that weapon right away and show off their new talent. So I, I think that he breaks off a big play and ends up finding himself in the end zone for a rookie score in week one. Give me Jameer Gibbs anytime touchdown plus 130. I like that. I was looking at his yards too, and they're pretty high. I think it's at like 72 or 75 or he something. He has like rush plus receive yards. I think that's yes. all the way up there. And, and that's yes. probably an inter more interesting way to play it because you don't know if he's going to be in the pass or run game the most. Yeah. And I, I was looking at that and um, and I was really interested in that one, but I'm going to fade him on St. Brown, which I know Whoa. sounds crazy, which I know sounds crazy. I guess, hey, by the way, here's my bold take. I've been playing it really safe. Here's my there bold take. And he's coming off of an ankle injury. Now he he was if he is going to be a full participant in practice. I believe he was on Monday, even a full participant in practice. He's no longer on the injured list, but he is coming off of an ankle injury. So that is something that you have to look at when you come with these receivers. And I love him. He recorded his first thousand yard season last year. He had six touchdowns. But Danny. Last season, he averaged below this mark, about 72.6 receiving yards per game in 2022. I don't even think I said what I was exactly going to be fading him on. I'm fading his receiving yards. It's at 77 and a half. It's juiced to minus 127. So we're looking at nearly four yards fewer than this line. And then all of a sudden, coming off of an ankle injury, we're beefing this up a little bit. I just, 
it just doesn't seem to fit for me. He also um, cashed the under on his receiving yards in seven of his last 10 games. And we do know that the Lions were dominant in their last 10 games of the season, and he was still hitting the under on his receiving yards. So this will be my risky play of the day. Amonra St. Brown deserves all the respect in the world, except for on his receiving yards. Props Interesting. And maybe if the ankle injury is lingering, then you're going to hit this. I feel like he either goes under. I mean, you said seven out of 10 final weeks of the season, he went to under when he was a very profitable player and yes. won fantasy leagues for some people, uh, yeah. you know, and the other weeks. So he's either going to go under or way over. And you might be on, on the sharp side of the yes. under there. I think a lot of people will be betting the way over, but hey, maybe that ankle's still bothering him. Yeah, and there's a reason why the uh, the under is is juice there. And yeah, look, uh, Monra St. Brown is one of the best slot receivers uh, in the NFL. Certainly now with Cooper Cup sideline going to see a specialist, which are words you never want to hear as a player uh, or team or a fan when you got to go see a specialist. But I expect big things out of Monra St. Brown um, this season. I would have loved to have him on my fantasy team. It didn't end up working out that way. But yeah, I'm gonna fade his I'm gonna fade his yards. Um, all right, let's get a little funky with it right now, Danny. Some sprinkle worthy plays, not necessarily anything more betting the house on um but look a first touchdown score is always a fun one i'll go first with my safe chalky boring play travis kelsey plus 450 <laughs> what are you looking at uh i'll go second travis kelsey plus 450 <laughs> let's go I mean, come on for the culture and, and yeah. also we were talking about on a previous episode how kelsey went for a large span of weeks uh, when we were on with kenny actually recently that he didn't score and he yeah. ended up still coming damn near the top of the league in, in receiving touchdown leaders for a tight end uh, just behind Devontae Adams. So if he doesn't, you know, if he starts with a bang early on, uh, he might end up leading the league in touchdowns and uh, and not having that drought that weirdly he had despite an yeah. amazing season. So let's say that he does it not only scores in the first week, let's say he's the first player to score yes. in the 2023 yes. season. I like it. Yes. And you know, I love a tight end prop. I'm always going to bet tight ends. Um, all right. So uh, looking at like a, a same game parlay, I've put one together for us, Danny. And okay, it is at cook. plus 420 which, you know, take that how you will. Um, so, so Patrick Mahomes, total passing touchdowns over two and a half. I already talked about this. This guy gets an average of three touchdowns per game on week one in the NFL. And if he is going to be making these, then why not take Harrison Butker, total made field goals over one and a half. So I feel like, you know, we got both sides of the offense um, uh, going here. We got uh, Patrick Mahomes, making his touchdowns and we've got uh butker making his field goals so that's where i'm going with this plus 420. that's a lot, of points. a lot of uh, points my ex-girlfriend was good friends with harrison butker's sister shout out charlotte butker really oh. nice girl i like this bet i'm tailing because of that alone all right and um tell his sister to tell his brother to make his field goals on thursday night Seriously. that would be well, that would be weird i'm gonna have to hit up my ex for that and that's a, a road i don't know all right. if well, I don't, even for that no, no, no. I, I, I prefer your new girlfriend, um, and I'm not going to uh, set any bad juju there by you reaching out for those type of things. Although I, I am excited to see kickers in the NFL because if you've been watching college football, the kickers are absolutely atrocious. Yep. Welcome. The NFL is back, and you will have to rely on uh, the one guy that you know sees maybe I don't know three or four plays a game here and there. Yeah. And, and his precious foot. So, good luck, guys. The NFL is back. We're we're in for a ride. We are in for it, and it's, kickers are a sore subject for me and the 49ers because we have none at this point. We signed someone to the practice squad because maybe Jake Moody is going to be available. Maybe he's not. Um, all right, so let's get into Mox Locks, the first Mox Locks of the 2023 NFL season. Danny, what are you absolutely taking to the window? I got to bet Lions plus seven and a half. I'm going to go oh, all okay. spread. Yep. It's minus 135. Yep. I just feel great about it, Katie. The Jared Goff week one, he's the most profitable week one quarterback in the last 20 years. I mean, can you believe that? And all the trends against the Chiefs when they're large favorites, uh, the trends all point towards the Lions here. I know the public's going to be on the Chiefs and they're coming off that Super Bowl win. You can find lots of angles for them, but... I just feel like last year, the public won with the Bills, and we both cashed that big. Yeah. My angle, my theory was sports betting is legalized. It's proliferating in all these states. Why wouldn't the sports books want to gift you a beautiful public yeah. win to start? Everyone's betting now, Katie. I think the suckers are going to lose from week one to week 17. Let's I'm go. on the other side. Give me Lions plus seven and a half. All right. I love it. Um, and for that to cash, you know, we got to have a little bit of a shootout here because I like Patrick Mahomes over the two and a half passing touchdowns. I gave it at the top. I put it in my parlay and now I'm giving it as what I'm absolutely walking to the window. It just, it's, it's asinine to me that you're giving me Patrick Mahomes to have three touchdowns at plus 
money um, against this Lions secondary that absolutely sucked last year. I know it doesn't look the same, but we don't know exactly what it looks like. So um, I'm, I'm taking that for, for mine. Anything in particular you're looking forward to for your Giants this year? Oh, why did you say that? Because I don't know why all my, <laughs> friends are, all my friends in New York are really excited about this season. Yeah. And I'm like the humbug guy. I'm like bringing the mood down. I'm worried about the Giants this year, to be honest. I just feel like we overachieved a lot th- last year. Maybe I'm just a skeptic and I have some cynicism in me. But yeah. uh, Oh, you're a New Yorker, you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you don't say that's unique <laughs> to you, Danny, right? Uh, <laughs> I just feel like we overachieved last year. I love Dayball. I love Saquon. I'm worried about that big contract we give to Daniel Jones. If it doesn't pan out this year, it's going to look like a big mistake. Yeah, well, he's restructured it. I believe $6 million of cap space is now uh, opened up, which means they are put they put that as a signing bonus for him. So I'm like, wow, y'all really believe in Daniel Jones because you're giving him this money now as a signing bonus to to relieve some cap space. And also, who are we getting in that cap space? Yeah, right. $6 million cap space. They could sign me to wipe the benches off. Come on. <laughs> I hope they do. That's a lot of money to wipe the benches, and I would be very proud of you. I'll take All right, Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Let's uh, let's cash some tickets. Let's make some money starting right here on Moxie Bets in week one and all throughout the NFL season. This has been Moxie Bets presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Thank you to Danny Brasco. Don't forget to follow us on social at Moxie Bets, and we'll see you on Thursday where we will go through the Sunday slate.